O people of Zion, behold, the Lord will come to save the nations, and the Lord will make the glory of his voice heard in the joy of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. The voice of John the Baptist cries out in the desert, Make way for the way of the, the Lord, make straight his paths. So let us do so by calling to mind our sins, to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain. Zion, herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice. Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, and in his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Your response is, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. 
But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Your blessing, Father. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of the one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time I've flown in an airplane, I'm fascinated. It's an amazing piece of machinery, and yes, we have the mathematical and the physical description of how it works. We can reproduce it regularly. But nonetheless, it's an amazing thing that something that weighs hundreds of tons full of people and fuel and luggage, can fly so high, so far, so fast. And even just the everyday miracle of our automobiles. I came here tonight from West Bend. Took no time at all to go 20 miles. And I do it almost every day. These things were unimaginable even just a hundred or so years to a hundred some years ago. And the amount of information that is at our fingertips in just a moment, when it was barely 150 some years ago, it was amazing to be able to, be able to send even just a few words in code across the Atlantic Ocean. What's amazing about these things is that these accomplishments, while we look at them sometimes with just a bit of a nostalgia and a wonderment of how they came to be, nonetheless, we come to take them for granted. They are part of routine, and we have an expectation that they will be reliable and that they will be there when we need them. 
I'm right there with you when my flight is delayed and I'm going to be spending an extra few hours in that airport. That's one of the last places I want to be. Even though, if I thought about it, I'm still going to end up getting to my destination far before I ever could have without that airplane, even though it's going to be late. Or the next time I break down on the side of the road or I get a flat tire, I'm still going to be getting to the place where I need to be, even if I'm delayed, far longer than if I was walking on foot in a much safer way. It's amazing that the things that we construct for ourselves for, to get places more efficiently, more quickly, our expectation for them to happen regularly with speed and efficiency keeps right up with them. Every time we push the envelope a little bit further, so do our expectations. And we're frustrated when they don't keep up. That letter to Peter, a reminder that here is God at work, and he appears to be delayed. Where is God in his second coming? Where is God in bringing his peace? Where is God bringing in his justice? In a world where our expectations keep getting pushed more and more to be able to have it, whatever it is that we need or that we want here and now, God seems more and more and more delayed. But God's activity, God's work, God's plan far exceeds whatever my travel plans are going to be for this weekend or whatever I may have hoped to accomplish with my own projects, my, my own contacts, my own writing, my own reading, my own do-it-yourself project, I will reach different frustrations, obstacles along the way. But there is a larger work at hand. And whatever idea I might have for the most fast, efficient way to bring peace, bring justice, to bring wholeness for myself and for the people around me, I'm probably going to overlook a lot of things. I'm probably going to forget some people. I'm probably going to forget some needs that are really there. But God won't. God has a much wider plan in store than anything that I could imagine or design. As we are on our way to Christmas, as we are on our, this journey of anticipating the coming of the Lord, God in his own time will arrive precisely when he has determined it. But he has called us to be watchful because we do not have the knowledge, we do not have the technology to know exactly when that will be. That's for God to know. But he has assured us, he has given us that hope that he is on the way. And so whenever we find ourselves perhaps frustrated by one of our common conveniences or amenities, perhaps that's a moment for us to pause and to be able to give thanks. God, thank you for giving me that blessing of being able to tra travel those tens of thousands of miles I already have done safely. God, thank you for being in my life, for giving me this opportunity to perhaps appreciate your goodness. And God, give me this moment, offer up whatever I may have to do without for this day, for this Advent, for this Christmas. And Lord, I give it to you. I offer this to you. I give it back to you because I know that you will make all things right. 
you are on your way, you will not be late. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the God who always hears us, let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Father. That the church may grow in grace through, through this season of Advent as we prepare to greet the Lord Jesus when he returns. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may work together to attain peace with justice in our world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer that we may always foster respect and protection for all human life, including the unborn. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that our personal relationship with Jesus Christ be nourished by the word of God and a life of prayer. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who have separated themselves from the grace of God may find this season a time of reconciliation and peace. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that the sick, the lonely, and the depressed may find strength and hope in the love that God has for those in need. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, for all the souls in purgatory, the intentions of this Mass, and, the soul, and all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and loving God, you call us to be disciples of your son, Jesus, and good stewards of your many gifts. Open our minds and hearts to a greater awareness and deeper appreciation of your countless blessings. Transform us through the power of your spirit to nurture a stewardship way of life marked by faith-filled prayer, service to our neighbor, and generous sharing. Teach us to be faithful servants of your gifts. With Mary's help, may we return tenfold the gifts entrusted to us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Cecilia, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. A reminder that for communion, we will go up the side aisles first and then return to your places down the center. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jerusalem, arise and stand upon the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Uh, you may have noticed on your way in that uh, we're no longer asking you to sign your name uh, for uh, when you come to Mass. So there's a satisfaction with how things are working with uh, the masking and the distancing and the sanitizing and what have you. That, that's no longer necessary. So thank you all for, for doing that. And uh, so we can at least remove one of those restrictions uh, from our lives. So thank you for all of that. Um, the, the schedule for the Holy Day of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as well as for the Christmas Masses, those schedules are published, so you can find those in uh, the bulletin and online uh, and through the mobile app, uh, Facebook and, and that. Um, so have a look there. We have Monday evening Masses of Anticipation for the Holy Day for the Immaculate Conception, as well as Masses on the Day. So. I'll let you look at those times and places. And then for Christmas, uh, have a look at the masses, um, and we need you to make a reservation for that, because we need to be very careful about how many people we have. So we want to sign people up in groups. Um, so if you're having family who are coming to stay with you or are spending a, a decent length of time with you during Christmas, uh, we are permitting you to sign up together since you will be together anyway during that time. Um, so just call um, whichever parish office of the Mass that you would like to go to, and they will get you a spot. So please uh, uh, do that. Um, the, the contact numbers will be sent out over the mobile app as well in case you don't have those. And then lastly, just a reminder that the Five Saints prayer team is continuing to pray the rosary um, every Tuesday at 7 p.m., and that's broadcast on the Five Saints uh, Facebook Live. Um, so we can still join in together uh, in communal prayer, even though we may not be able to join together physically. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks.